Monster Cat NFTs are bad. Well, are they really? Let's talk about it. So yesterday from when this video was released, uh, that being, I guess, January 19th, uh, Monster Cat released a statement on NFTs that had a lot of backlash to it. But let's get there in a second. I think we need to kind of backtrack and talk about what NFTs are, why Monster Cat's doing them, why people are upset about them, and let's just talk about it in a whole grand scheme, because why not? Also, before I go any further, I am not an NFT expert. I am not a crypto expert. This is just some random guy on YouTube talking to you. So I take everything with a grain of salt. So first of all, what are NFTs? If you don't know what they are, I am i don't know where you've been living. So I'm going to quickly go over them. Non-fungible tokens, it's essentially artwork. It's kind of like almost like GIFs, videos, kind of songs that you can buy digitally as if they are a physical piece of art. There's a way for it to essentially, through blockchain stuff, through Ethereum, to say, hey, you are the owner of this digital artwork. It's just like you would have a painting in your house, but it's like, it's 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 yours. There's a way to tell. Another important thing is that NFTs all run off of Ethereum, one of the most popular cryptocurrencies out there. Bitcoin's probably number one, Ethereum's number two. So everything runs off of the Ethereum blockchain. So first of all, why would anyone really want an NFT? Well, it's art. It's creative. It can be whatever you want it to be or whatever the artist wants it to be. It can pretty much be whatever. Some really popular NFTs that you have may have seen around the internet is the Bored Apes and the Crypto Punks. They are quite popular. They're all over the place. It's a kind of randomizer way to create your own image, your own special piece of art. Some people think it is awesome. They love it. They think it's super creative, super interesting. You get to express yourself in some way or another, and others think it is dumb. You can just screenshot it. This doesn't need to be worth like $180,000 per Bored Ape. People are very, very dumb. It's very divisive. So yeah, on one hand, people really love it. They think it's super fun. A lot of rich people really enjoy it too. On the other hand, people are like, this sucks. This is dumb. As art, this is just stupid. Why does this even exist? It's just essentially scamming people for, out of their money. And it's really bad for the environment. So that's a huge part of it though. So let's talk about that now. So some stats I found from the Digiconomist, which MonsterCat has actually cited in some of their papers, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, say that currently right now, per one transaction, for one minting of an NFT, uh, it takes 2.5 days of household electrical use. So buying one NFT is essentially the same as running your house for two and a half days. So you can decide how much that's really worth it for you, but that's a stat. Um, also that the Ethereum... The amount of energy that Ethereum takes up in the past year, or maybe it's just as annually, uh, is more than all of Denmark, so all more than an entire country. And it has the same carbon footprint as Lithuania. So those are fairly recent stats from the Digiconomist. I will try to link everything in the description below if I can, but that's that. So yes, our world is in this crazy place right now where we are very, very attentive to environmental disasters. I don't want to say that's the right word. We are very, very hyper attentive to what we are putting into the environment, which is a great thing, which is a very good thing. We want the planet to survive. We're hitting points of no return at this point. And so it's a good thing that we're talking about it and we're being as hypersensitive as we are about it. But we have to look at the return on investment here. Is the energy that it costs to make these transactions, to make these NFTs, to emit these NFTs, is it worth the environmental impact it has? And a lot of people would pretty much say no. And that's their biggest argument for why they don't like NFTs. So that's general about NFTs. Now let's specifically talk about Monster Cat NFTs. So I'm gonna start off by giving some props to Darlington because he has always been sort of on the leading edge, innovative side of the music industry. And Monster Cat as a whole has been hailed for their proactive stance in the industry. They've sort of done stuff before other labels have and been a pioneer of sorts for especially EDM. So it's no surprise that Darlington hopped on the NFT bandwagon, I wanna say. It's not quite a bandwagon, but was super, super looking forward to making some Monster Cat NFTs. So January 2021 rolls around and Monster Cat releases the Origins collection of NFTs. And apparently from EDM.com, they said that in the first two minutes of this drop, Monster Cat made $180,000 from selling these NFTs. And then in October of last year as well of 2021, they released the Idols collection where you could get either the Idols or the Relics, I believe. So the Idols are the 3D models, the kind of uh, like video GIF versions of the NFTs, while the Relics are the actual song components, if my understanding is correct. The Relics can also be used in the metaverse in Facebook's or Meta's metaverse, to my understanding. So from a purely creative standpoint, this is pretty cool. 
I don't know, having these artworks that have songs attached to them. You can go into the metaverse and listen to these songs or see this artwork in it. Like that's, that's pretty neat. That's pretty interesting. But we have to look at the flip side of that. What is the impact that is actually having on creating those art pieces? I also want to acknowledge right off the bat that they had a ton of backlash. Monster Cat and Darlington received a ton of backlash from the community of people saying, don't do it. It's hurting the environment. NFTs are dumb. There's tons of fraud. Again, environment, 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 environment. They're pushing it like crazy. Don't do it. You're going to kill people just for a quick buck and don't. But Monster Cat, and I'm quite certain Darlington as a front runner of this, wanted to keep doing NFTs. They wanted to do it. And so they wanted to kind of, I want to say justify why they were continuing to do NFTs. So they uh, came out with a report, actually, that you can find on their website that will be linked below. So Monster Cat hired out RNG Strategic, an environmental agency, to kind of figure out what their environmental impact is from these NFT launches, which I think is brilliant. Like, obviously, that is, that's great that you're taking initiative and you're actually being like, hey, this is the hard data. This is how much impact we're actually having on the environment with this. So in September of 2021, the RNG Strategic Sustainability Agency, they wrote a report on, I believe it was the January, the, the 2021 drop of the Origins Collection, where they had essentially, they were <laughs> talking about how many transactions and how much gas each of the transition transactions cost. So a transaction is pretty much anything on the blockchain that happens to create these NFTs. Monster Cat launched 1,500, so 1,500 individual NFTs from the Origins collection and ended up being about 1,561, I believe, uh, total transactions. And that ended up costing 379 million gas. Gas is like a unit of energy consumption. And in the report, the RNG group says that uh, um, on, on average in 2020, uh, a gas, a unit of gas equaled 0.00018095891589 whatever kilograms of CO2. So that's a lot of numbers. And the hardest part is that sometimes it costs more energy. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's less or more. So they have a low average and a high energy consumption kind of evaluation in the report. I'm going to take just the average scenarios here just for context, but essentially in the end, the first NFT drop of Monster Cat cost about 68,000 kilograms of CO2. So that's 68 metric tons of CO2 emissions, which again, based off an average scenario and from the report from the RNG group, says that it was about 46 homes of electricity for a year. So the first NFT drop that Monster Cat did, 1,561 uh, 1, total transactions, cost about the same energy of powering 46 houses for a year. So part of that is for you to decide now, how much is that really? 46 houses a year or 46 houses for a year? How much energy consumption is that really in the grand scheme of things? But one thing I want to note off the bat is this is the average scenario from 2020 numbers. If you look at the Digiconomist now, you can see the energy consumption from the Ethereum chain is quite a bit more, especially in 2022. There's a lot of things going on here. And so there's a lot of different factors, but it's probably safe to say that it's probably a little bit more on the higher end of what this report gave in September of 2021. So where does this lead us? all the way back to this post that came out January 19, 2022, where Monster Cat says, this is our goal on sustainability. This is what we're trying to do. I got a ton of backlash. So the TLDR or the too long didn't read from this post is essentially, hey, we made artists $300,000 from these NFT drops and it's created a whole nother avenue of revenue for these artists, which I think is obviously great. You want more money in the artist pockets, but also we're gonna plant trees. They say they're planting about 50,000 mangrove trees, which equals to about $25,000 US cost as a sort of counteraction to what they are doing with the NFTs and the environmental impact those are having. So now I kind of got to weigh the two here. So is the, the 46 <laughs> houses of electricity a year versus the 50,000 trees, the mangrove trees, you can't really compare the two that much but that's pretty much for you to decide. And in the statement, Monster Cat does say planting trees isn't the solution. It's not a perfect solution. It just kind of counteracts what they're doing now. And 
a lot of people are like, hey, this is this is greenwashing. Greenwashing is pretty much saying, hey, we're doing something really bad for the environment, but look at us do this other stuff over here, and this is actually good for the environment. So what we're doing is actually good for the environment, not really bad. And so a lot of people are calling greenwashing. So what do the reports kind of say on this? So the RNG Strategic Group, again, of the sustainability agency, did a report in, I believe, what is this, November 2021, and at the end of it, gave, or it's a Veritree audit of them offsetting their sustainability stuff, their environmental approaches, their emissions, um, and says, there's two two headings at the very end that I want to read. So, does RNG approve of Monster Cat's approach to offsetting emissions, and what are ways to improve the solution more? So, this is now the sustainability agency saying, do they think what Monster Cat is doing is appropriate, and what do they think they could do better? So, with all the considerations in place, RNG Group says that they do think it is a strong approach to offsetting these emissions. And in the end, they say, we would recommend moving forward with a drop as long as all these considerations remain in place. So I'm just gonna straight up read the first couple lines of this last one that says, what are ways to improve the solution more? So this is what RNG thinks Monster could do better. They say, because the priority should always be placed on reduction before offsetting, RNG recommends that Monster Cat still proceed with a company-wide emission audit to identify sources of emissions in its own value chain and reduce them as much as possible before looking at other offset opportunities. So RNG pretty much says, go for it, but hey, let's actually look at how much the NFTs are causing in the first place and how to reduce that before going to plant some trees. So all of this in the end, what does this mean? What are our final takeaways? What, what are we doing about this whole thing? I, I don't know. I will be very front and honest and say that I really don't have a harsh opinion one way or another. I know a lot of the Monster Cat community says NFTs are horrible, they're really bad, what Monster Cat's doing is, is, is awful, and there's a really small minority of people that actually really, really enjoy it. Are you putting more money in artists' pockets? Yes. Is it kind of cool and creative and a new means of creative expression? Yeah. Does it have an environmental impact? Absolutely. Are they doing something to offset that? They are. Is it enough? That's really for you to decide. Monster Cat really, really wants to do NFTs. They want to, they think it's great for the label, they think it's great for the artist, they think it's the future. Have they done the research? Yeah, they've also sort of done the research. They brought in a whole sustainability agency to write a report on their stuff. I'll be quite honest, looking at all the data here, if my data and calculations are correct and I'm reading everything the way it is, it doesn't seem that bad to me. So are these NFT launches good for artists? Is it good for the label in terms of money, bringing in other sources of revenue and another creative outlet? Yes. Is it bad for the environment in any capacity at all? Yes, it is as well. And so you have to pretty much weigh the return on investment here, the environment versus the creativity and the money that's coming in. Everyone's scales will be different in this sense. And so this is where we need to weigh it all with a little bit of grain of salt compared to what you weigh versus what others weigh. It really does seem like Monster Cat has done their due diligence here. They wrote a report, they had they hired out RNG, the sustainability agency, to come and do a report, and they say they would go ahead, continue doing an emissions audit, but go ahead. The offset works for now. It's tough to really gauge if Monster Cat NFTs are bad. The original question, the original title of this video, and here's where I think I'm gonna land the plane here. This may be a wrong take, this may be a hot take, but I think this should actually lie in the hands of the artists individually, not the label. And for full transparency, I have no idea what the rules are here. I don't know if Monster Cat has the right to all the album art, all the songs, all the licensing, if they can just do it without the artist's permission. But if I was running it, if I would like a, hey, what would you do if you're in the seat, if you're in the driver's seat here? I would ask every artist individually, including the artwork artists, so the people that actually made the album art and stuff, if they're okay with it if they want their stuff to be NFTs. And if they say no, you just don't use that artist's artwork or music. As simple as that. I think Monster Cat really is honing in on the idea that they want to put more money in the pockets of artists. And I think this is the way to do it. If the artist wants to do it themselves, the artist can do it. So that's just my honest hot take opinion on it. You may not agree at all, that's all good. In the end, are Monster Cat NFTs bad? It's for you to decide. So now that I've conveyed all the data, all my opinions, everything out there, what do you guys think? I'm sure this is gonna be a fire comment section and I would love to know. Please, please, please be civil in the comment section. I gave a lot of things here. I talked a lot about things. If there's data I'm missing, if there are anything that I'm getting wrong, 
I would love to know. But with that, I've been Bowtie Media in a very, very different style video that may get a lot of hate. Signing off.